So from the time I was in the cradle, my mother and my grandmother made it clear that my main responsibility on this earth was to not let the Jewish people die out on my watch. <laughs> if I did nothing else, the least I could do it would be to make more Jews. <laughs> and so when my wonderful husband and I got married 22 years ago, even though he wasn't Jewish, he agreed that we would raise the kids Jewish. Uh, and so uh, we have two boys who are teenagers now. And uh, as they were growing up, we did everything that we could to encourage a strong sense of Jewish identity. We sent them to Jewish preschools, Jewish summer camps. They both had bar mitzvahs, the whole schmear. But I worried, would it stick? And so um, uh, when my older son was born, uh, he had a bris, you know, we did the whole thing. Um, and I, when they were little, I worried, is it harder to feel Jewish if you don't look Jewish? Uh, so my older son is in college now, and so he goes to a Catholic college, so I'm not sure where that's going. Uh, <laughs> so my younger son, Jonah, uh, I literally feel like all of my eggs are in his basket. <laughs> that it's going to be up to him to fulfill my obligation on this earth. Uh, now, Jonah takes after my uh, blonde-haired, blue-eyed, uh, Eagle Scout, Indiana, born and bred husband. Jonah definitely does not look Jewish. Uh, and like I said, is it, is it harder to look, feel Jewish if you don't look Jewish? When Jonah was born, my uncle said that we should have named him Hans Gunther. Because uh, he looked like a German banker, which he did. Uh, and. Uh, as when he got older, everyone said that he looked like a perfect candidate for a Hitler youth poster. <laughs> it's true. Uh, and so when he got into middle school, he said that he wanted to be in the big spring play. Uh, and as a seventh grader, pretty competitive uh, process, and he didn't get a part, he was relegated to the tech crew. And, uh, but as a good Jewish mother, I went to every performance to see him work the soundboard. <laughs> I sat proudly in the front row. And I especially wanted to be there on the last night because his middle school had this annual tradition that at the end of the last performance, they would announce the play they would be doing a full year later. And so the moment came, and the teacher was up there. And right before I reached, and I took my husband's hand, and I closed my eyes, and I prayed, please let it be a play with a part for a blonde-haired, blue-eyed, six-foot-tall eighth grader who cannot sing. <laughs> and I closed my eyes, and the teacher calls out, the play next year will be The Sound of Music. <laughs> All the kids cheered. I turned to my husband, horrified, and I said, oh my god, they're going to make him a Nazi. <laughs> a full year later, I was right. <laughs> Not only did they cast him as a Nazi, they cast him as Admiral von Schreiber, the uber-Nazi. <laughs> and I thought, seriously, are you kidding me? I, I, what, what am I supposed to do? How in good conscience can I let my gorgeous Jewish son play a Nazi? And I struggled with this. And then I started to think about Hogan's Heroes. For those of you who may be unfamiliar, Hogan's Heroes was a sitcom in the 1970s 
where a wily group of allied soldiers uh, would outwit bumbling Nazis week after week in a, a German POW camp. But what you probably don't know is that every single Nazi in that sitcom was played by a Jewish actor. All of them, Burkholder, Schultz, Colonel Klink, all of them, and had actually escaped Europe and come to America. And so I thought, if all those actors can play Nazis, all those Jews, then my son can play a Nazi. And being a Jewish mother, and if my son is gonna be a Nazi, he's gonna be the very best <laughs> possible Nazi that he can be. So we showed him a lot of episodes of Hogan's Heroes. <laughs> and the only bad part about that is that he walked around the house for months afterwards randomly yelling, Schultz! <laughs> <laughs> so as the show drew nearer, uh, I went and I volunteered to chaperone at the final dress rehearsal. And I sat there at a lunch table uh, in the cafeteria slash auditorium, the cafetorium of the middle school with the other chaperones and the other kids. Whoever wasn't up on stage was sitting in the cafetorium at the lunch table. And I'm eagerly waiting a scene for Jonah to be in because I'm, I'm dying to see him up there. And so finally the moment arrives, he comes out. Uh, and I have this just rush of mix of emotions. You know, part of me is I'm so proud. There he is, my son, up there on the stage. Uh, but then this weird irony, because he's up there dressed in a full Nazi uniform, swastika and all, totally looking the part. <laughs> <laughs> and he was, you know, eighth grade, he was six, six feet tall. So, um, so the scene... Jonah was, Jonah was in, started out pretty well. Uh, he starts, does his lines. He says, when are the Von Trapps coming back from their honeymoon? And why are you not flying the flag of the Third Reich? And then somebody must have missed a cue, because all the kids are kind of standing there in an awkward silence. And Jonah cannot resist the opportunity to ham it up in front of a captive audience. <laughs> so he takes a small step forward, raises both arms, swastika and all, and says, so a rabbi walks into a bar. <laughs> All the kids kind of gasp, and I, t I took off my glasses, and I put my head down on the table, and I'm just like, oh, God, this is so Jonah. <laughs> and Jonah seems like he can kind of sense, like, there's sort of a change of mood in the room. Like, the, everyone seems kind of nervous, like, where, where is he going with this? And even I, don't, even I don't know where he's going with this. And he says, it's okay, I'm Jewish. <laughs> And there's sort of a collective sigh in the room. And everybody realized, OK, this is just a goofy kid making a ju goofy joke. But to me, it was a moment. It was my moment. My son is a Jew. 